last epithelial tissue video, I just want to talk about some of the features that you can find on apical and lateral surfaces of epithelial tissues, the cells in epithelial tissues. So first, um, because it's important for tissue identification, I want to teach you the difference between um, cilia and microvilli and how to tell on an image which one's which. So you have, um, just to start, you have two different simple columnar epithelial tissues. You have um, this one that you're looking at, and this one is just called simple columnar epithelium, and then you have this one that's called ciliated simple columnar epithelium. So that necessitates that you can tell the difference between cilia and what's on the other one, which is called microvilli. So um, let me introduce you to the difference between cilia and microvilli by drawing you a little picture of what each one looks like, um, how each one is formed. It doesn't really look like this, but okay. So um, if I drew two different tissues and I called them A and B, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them both simple columnar epithelium, but I'm going to change what's on the apical surface. So um, what A is going to have is it's just going to kind of look like little minions in which the cells are really close to one another. And then on the surface of the cells, you have these little protein projections, okay? Um, these protein projections have mitochondria at their base and they can wiggle. Um, these are going to be cilia. And what they are for is moving things along the surface. So if, for instance, they were all waving that direction, you could move something along the surface of the cell. Whereas B is still going to have simple columnar epithelial cells, but um, what you're going to do when you get to the apical surface is you are going to fold the cell membrane and it's going to look more like Bart Simpson than it's going to look like a minion. You're going to fold the cell membrane right there. And what this one does is this one isn't about moving things along the surface. This one is about the increased surface area at the apical surface allows for you to increase transport in and out of the cell. And these are called microvilli. Okay, so cilia versus microvilli. So let's show you a couple other views of cilia versus microvilli. All right, so now I'm hoping that you can tell in a histology slide what cilia versus microvilli look like. So if we look at this one up a little closer, um, to me what microvilli usually look like on a histology slide is they kind of look like somebody took a highlighter and just highlighted the edge, the apical surface. So it looks kind of like a pink highlighter. It's all nice and uniform. So hopefully you can see it like right there. So that's what microvilli looks like to me. Whereas um, cilia to me look kind of like um, bedhead. So it's all messy and it looks like protein projections. So what you're really seeing when you look at cilia versus microvilli is the microvilli are actually this folded cell membrane that you see at the surface there. If you look at them really closely, they actually look like this. And this is um, an apical view of cilia versus microvilli. See if you can tell which one's which. So this is what microvilli look like on the surface, and this is what cilia look like on the surface. So they have entirely different structures and functions. You have to kind of get used to looking at them before you can tell. Now, um, when I ask you cilia versus microvilli, how would I state it? I would basically like put um, a, an arrow or something right there, um, and I would say, okay, name the structure on this surface and you would say um, microvilli or um, on a different image I would say name the structure found at this surface and you would say cilia okay so um, 
if I want you to say apical surface, I will ask name the surface. If I want you to actually label a structure, I'll say name the structure. So it's my job to write a clear question. It's your job to answer the question that I ask. So in addition, as far as knowing whether we're talking about cilia versus microvilli, you actually only learn two ciliated tissues. It's not that there only are two ciliated tissues, but you only learn two. So this one is ciliated simple columnar epithelium. And so if you can recognize cilia, all you really have to be able to do is to recognize the difference between this one and this one, which is ciliated um, pseudostratified columnar epithelium, or um, or pseudostratified cilia, it doesn't matter which order you put that in. So can you tell the difference between pseudostratified and simple? I think you can, right? Especially if I'm really clear about where I'm looking. So this is um, ciliated simple columnar epithelium, and this is ciliated pseudostratified. So really there's only two ciliated tissues. And as far as you are learning, there's only one tissue that has microvilli. Now, um, sometimes you'll run into a tissue that looks like simple columnar epithelium and you can't tell whether it's microvilli or cilia. Don't worry about that. There are those, but I'm not going to ask you to identify the microvilli or cilia if there aren't any. Okay. Um, and then one last thing, um, goblet cells. So let's talk about the goblet cells. Okay. So if we look at goblet cells, what are you actually seeing? Um, a goblet cell, um, basically the nucleus is all the way down here at the, oops, sorry, I don't want to use that one. Um, the nucleus is down here at the bottom and then there's a skinny base that goes up to a wide top so and the wide top tends to be kind of clear like this right here um, and so what happens is this makes again mucin which when mixed with water makes mucus and you can dump that onto the surface so um, that's what a goblet cell is and let's see, let me show you a closer view with a different type of microscopy of a goblet cell as well. Let's see, where are you, goblet cell? I knew I just brought it up because I just looked at it a second ago. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is using transmission electron microscopy. It's a different kind of microscopy. And um, this is what you're actually seeing with the goblet cell. So again, let me draw this one more time for you. You're looking at the goblet cell. So where are the boundaries of the cell? So it looks skinny at the bottom because the nucleus takes up a bunch of the room. So here's the nucleus right here, right? Um, and then the cell with all those little bubbles of mucin in it goes up. Here's where the cell actually goes. So that's a goblet cell. Um, so they're kind of wine glass shaped cells. Um, and their job is to produce mucus. And um, you see goblet cells most frequently um, in the regular simple columnar epithelium without cilia. You find this tissue in the um, tissue lining the small intestine and the mucus can either help with lubrication or sometimes it breaks things down. Um, and then you also find these goblet cells in the ciliated simple, uh, ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium in the respiratory tract, okay? So that's those three surface features. And then um, in addition to those three surface features, mm -hmm. you also have what are called lateral surface features of epithelial tissues. You usually can't see these on a histology slide, so it's more like just kind of understanding what they're about. So let's talk about what those are about. Where is that figure? Oh, it's here. Okay, so what are these guys about? Okay, so um, this is what we're talking about, this figure right here. So these are called um, lateral um, cell junctions or sometimes intercellular junctions. And basically um, what happens is this tissue, so this is an epithelial tissue, here's the apical surface, there's the basal surface, and the cells, if I use the metaphor for an epithelial tissue of like tiling a floor, then the connective tissue underneath would be like the subfloor. And then the basement membrane would be the adhesive that you put down and then you put the cells down right next to one another and those would be the tiles. 
but then I need grout, right? So these cells are actually stuck together in several different ways with different types of lateral cell junctions. And there's three different forms we'll talk about here. There are these guys, which are called tight junctions, these guys desmosomes, and these guys gap junctions. There are three different ways of sticking the cells together and they have three different functions. What a tight junction is, the metaphor that I want to use, is it's like a, a waterproof zipper that goes all the way through the cell. And what it's supposed to do is it is supposed to keep things from sneaking between the cells so that um, you are going to have to basically ask permission. So if something wants to get through this tissue, it can't go between the cells, it gets forced to go through the cells. And you have a lot more control of that. So tight junctions are about impermeability. You want to put them places where you wouldn't want any accidental transport. Like the lumen of the stomach is really, really acidic and we don't want for that fluid to get into, to get between the cells and to damage the deeper tissues. Um, the um, so the next one is a desmosome, which is um, this guy right here. The desmosome is not about impermeability, it's about strength. And the desmosome is right here and here and here. These desmosomes are basically like spot welds that go laterally. So the um, cytos this, this cell right here, let's call these A, B, and C. Um, a reaches through and grabs onto the cytoskeleton of B, and B reaches through and grabs on the cytoskeleton of A, and it gives it a really strong spot weld. But those are um, really strong, but it doesn't mean they're impermeable because they're not like three-dimensional like the um, like the tight junction was. So these are for resistance to stretching and twisting, and they're in like um, the outer layer, of, well, the epidermis of the skin, they're in your cardiac muscle and the cervix and the reproductive tract. Um, and then um, last but not least, the one that is not really about impermeability or strength, but it's about allowing for communication between them is um, the gap junction, which is these guys right here. Um, a gap junction um, is in the physiology textbook calls it a connexon, which I had never heard until um, a little while ago. And so what does that do? Um, what that one does is basically um, you have you have um, a channel protein from cell B, which is connected to a channel protein from cell C. And what it allows for is for instantaneous communication between the cells because there's basically sort of an open passageway in the cell. So these are like connected channel proteins. And these are really important when you want for the cells to be able to behave as a single unit all together. Like when you want the heart to have a wave-like contraction, then if cell A gets the communication to wave, then it, or to contract, then B would get it next, and then C would get it next, and it allows for wave-like coordinated communication between the cells. Um, generally speaking, it's gonna be ions or something really tiny that moves through those. Okay, so that's it for that. The next thing that we will do is we'll just do some study tips and some review in the next video about epithelial tissues. I'll use ones that are not in your textbook so that you can get a little practice with those. All right.